Hey everybody, um, in this video I'm going to talk about what Homebrew is and why should you use Homebrew, how you could install Homebrew and some of the use case scenarios of Homebrew, how you, you install packages using Homebrew. We'll look into all that and at last we we'll look into how you could get rid of Homebrew for whatever reason if you don't like it, have it set it up. So what is Homebrew? Uh, Homebrew is just a package manager OS and Linux systems, it lets you install software packages directly from the terminal. Uh, it makes your life a lot easier. Uh, we'll look into its benefits in the next slide. So why should you use Homebrew? Um, first thing first, it makes installation and management of the packages a lot easier. If you have uh, tons of packages that you want to update it, all you have to do is just brew update and it'll update all the packages for you. You can pretty much install all the packages that you need uh, for development and it integrates well with the script. Like if you have any, some sort of automation tasks and that requires installation of certain packages, uh, your scripts could do that very well with Homebrew as long as the Homebrew is installed on that Mac. Apart from this, Homebrew also takes care of the dependency packages that you would need. For instance, if you have a package that requires any dependency on certain packages, uh, Homebrew will make sure that all those packages do get installed as well. How to install Homebrew? So this is the command that you just basically run it. Um, I'll share it in the comment below. Once you have that um, command running, this installation script will take care of everything it'll download the package from the web and do the installation and once the installation is completed you basically just add environment variables so let's get to our terminal and do the installation so this is the command we're gonna use um, you hit enter there you since it's going to install some packages on your computer so you do need to enter in the password once you enter in the password uh, it has loaded all the scripts asking for the confirmation if you want to continue this if you want to continue just hit enter this does take a little bit depending on your internet speed okay so the installation is done um, before the script finishes it's make sure that the homebrew is updated uh, and the last thing we gotta do as it said in the slides that we gotta make sure that we add environment variables to our pods so that whenever we run brew we don't have a trouble all right our pods been added now so installation is done um, now we'll look into some sort of a use case scenarios of homebrew if you just uh, want to do it like a, what brew does you, you could just run the command brew help if you're looking for certain packages you just type brew search ansible and if you want to install something you just brew install and package name uh, if you want to install something brew uninstall ansible so let's get to our terminal and see how does that work. So if you just want to say brew help, it'll tell you how do you, how you could use brew. Um, you want to search something, type brew search, looking to install a package, put in the package name. Uh, if you want to update something up to the brew, just run brew update, uh, upgrade some certain packages, run brew upgrade. So in our case, uh, I want to, like, you know, let's search brew search Ansible. Um, now um, I do have a few options to install from, uh, like certain packages that are available in the repository. So this is the one I will install. So I'll do oh no not a search anymore install already so this will download ansible for me from the from its brews repository and uh, make sure like as i mentioned before it kind of take it cares of all the dependencies that a package would need in our case in ansible's case it's it needed like you know pikes parser cffi open ssl all those packages that uh, that are required along with ansible are being downloaded and installed as well so this is going to take a little bit uh, and i'll come back once this is completed just a correction uh, when i previously said uh, i was downloading and installing 
back then it was just downloading uh, it is doing the installation now uh, all the dependencies being installed now uh, as you could see python 3.1 that is required for ansible is being installed as well and at last uh, it's the software that is being installed so our ansible has been installed if i no longer need ansible i have to do do brew uninstall uh, ansible and it will uninstall it for me all right that was quick so now what else you could do with the uh, homebrew if you want to list all the packages installed on using homebrew all you have to do is just run brew list uh, if you want to update brew and all its packages just run brew update if you want to just list outdated packages just run brew outdated and if you want to get rid of like old packages brew cleanup is the command that you want to run brew doctor is something command that you typically would use if you want to see any issues listed with your packages so let's just see here since we already removed install package i don't expect to see much so one thing I've noticed that it does not get rid of all those dependencies that installed with Ansible. So they are still sitting there. So we may have to remove them manually. Um, let's do brew. Alrighty, so I'm gonna Okay, so the reason that sometimes dependency thing don't get uninstalled because they they could be getting used by another packages. So which managers ignore and they don't remove dependencies of certain applications. So in our case, when we get rid of Ansible, you know, Brew didn't know that you know it is possible that OpenSSL or uh, Python 3.12 could be getting used by another packages. So, so that's why those dependencies didn't get uninstalled. So if I want to list outdated packages, I'll have to do just run Brew outdated. Um, nothing's outdated so brew doctor to see any issues with my uh, packages that are installed uh, your system is ready to brew so there's there's no issues there uh, brew cleanup this is gonna get rid of any old packages that been sitting there that need to be removed brew cleanup would do that but i don't expect to see much here either so since we just set it up brew i this is the reason we're not seeing tons of stuff here okay so the, the next spot is very interesting if you need to install gui applications for mac you could do that using homebrew it uses cost as an extension uh, and it also moves your software from apps folder so that the whenever it get installed by brew it's working as you would expect cost is just an extension of brew it's just it's just a brew's way of kind of categorizing the software that are mac os natives or other just development tools so what we will do we'll just install firefox first i will do i'll do the brew search uh, for firefox you would see it in the search that it does get displayed under casks so casks are basically like a, like i was saying that they're going applications and it's kind of like some sort of a different repository it's going to do brew install firefox since it's working, I'll just do a quick search to just to make sure Firefox installed on my machine. As you could see, I just did a quick search and the Firefox is not on my system. We'll wait for the installation to finish and you'll see the Firefox would get installed. So Firefox has been installed. As you could see that the as installation, I was finishing it up. It did say that it moved the Firefox app to application folders so that once I do a if I do a search now, I should be able to find Firefox and there it is. Firefox been installed. Now, I uh, just want to quickly 
tell you a couple of things about Brew when you're installing Going applications. If you are looking for some sort of additional info on, even though just kind of like a regular packages, non GUI packages, you will be able to find information about those just doing Brew info package name. It gives you a bit of an overview of what that package is and everything, and even tells you the home, like where it's kind of pulling in the the package from and the home page of that uh, the GUI application if I want to visit that home page of that package in, in our case is Firefox I'll have to do brew home Firefox and the page will get open in your particular browser in my case it's uh, uh, Google Chrome open up the, the Firefox home page for me there will be a scenarios where you know some of the apps that you want to install may not be available in uh, Brew's repository. And in those kind of scenarios, you would have to kind of add the repository and then do the installation. In my case, I wanted to install Heroku, and which isn't available in Brew's repository. To confirm my claims, I just do Brew search Heroku. You'll see nothing will show up. Uh, the package isn't showing up in the in the search. So what we have to do, we have to add brew tab Heroku brew. So whatever the repository you adding, you just gotta know its name before you add it. So to add it, just do brew tab and repository name and whatever the package is available in that repository will be available to us now. So if I do research for Heroku now, um, the package would show up and when you do when you do a quick search, you'll notice that the package are available under a particular repository would be listed something like this, repository name and then package name. So if you don't see anything um, with the, if you don't see anything like that, that means the package is available in Brew Score repository. So if I want to install Heroku now, I shouldn't have any trouble. I should do Brew install Heroku and this will take care of the installation for me. Now, if I want to remove this repository, <clears throat> I'll have to do like a Brew untap and repository name. But before I do that, I want to quickly show you that the issues that you may run into it. So in, in our case, it's just installed the brew, uh, sorry, it's just installed the Heroku. Now, if I try to untap or remove um, Heroku repository, it may fail. Uh, reason being that we still have Heroku installed. So if I want to remove Heroku repository I have to remove its respective packages as well so I could quickly do that brew and install Heroku and once the uninstallation is completed then I should be able to remove the repository as well as you could see it here so these these are all the use case scenarios of the homebrew so you could install packages search packages you know you could even install going applications for mac os and uh, if certain packages aren't available on homebrew you could add its repository and uh, then do the installation if you want to get rid of the repository you just do brew untap and hashicorp like no, sorry uh, brew untap uh, repository names and that will do the uninstallation for you or remove the repo for you and now at last uh, for whatever reason if you just don't like homebrew and you want to get rid of it um, you could simply do that um, just uh, type in this command in your terminal and uh, you should be able to do it just fine now um, you just gotta make sure when you're doing the un uninstallation of homebrew it's gonna remove all the installed packages that you uh, have installed using homebrew so i just have to click yes for this one this will remove homebrew and all the packages that's been installed this is expecting password as well so entering the password it has removed homebrew and all the packages but if you do do want to do a proper cleanup you may have to get rid of all the or directories 
uh, you'd have to kind of delete all those directories. If you just want to learn more about it, uh, you just have to go to brew.sh and uh, this this have all the necessary information that you would need for homebrew. And this there's a they do have a proper documentation in place. Um, feel free to search this one, explore this page if you just want to understand homebrew. And um, furthermore, uh, this is the place that you would go to. Thank you uh, for watching this video. If you liked it, consider subscribing and liking this video.